Brian here, and this is the first video of your topic five, cell reproduction and genetics. Now, in this uh, section of the notes here, we're going to describe the events that occur during the cell cycle. So this is going to include interphase, when the cell is not dividing, it's growing, getting bigger, replicating their DNA, nuclear division, which would be mitosis and meiosis, as well as cytokinesis, when we are splitting our cytoplasm. So let's get started here with just a little uh, brief information on cell division. So in order to reproduce, most cells will divide at some point in their, life span, in their lifespan. The actual process varies depending on the cell type. So we have two types of cells. We have somatic cells, which are non-reproductive cells. So that would be stuff like brain cells, um, our skeleton, our muscles, blood cells. Uh, mu uh, cells in our gut or in intestines, even skin cells. So these things are just cells that are replacing themselves. They're non-reproductive cells. They're pretty much everything in your body besides sperm and egg. Again, so somatic cells divide through a process called mitosis. And mitosis is just making an exact copy, keeping the same number of chromosomes, the same um, process here. So you're making just cells to replace and grow and develop. Now the other type of cells we have are gametic cells. Now gametic cells are reproductive cells. So in this case, we're looking at our sperm, we're looking at eggs and females. So again, these chromosomes actually go through um, two different splits and they go through a process called meiosis. Now in gametic cells, we actually have half the number of chromosomes. And the reason for that is is when you reproduce, half the chromosomes come from mom, half the chromosomes come from dad, which gives you your full set of 46 total chromosomes inside of your cells. So organisms reproduce in different ways as well. So not all of them are sexual reproduction. We, all, we have asexual reproduction as well. So asexual reproduction is, re, uh, is reproduction that involves a single parent to produce an offspring. So an example of this is actually a process called binary fission. So binary fission is just when a cell will actually bud off, like you see right here, and split into two identical cells. Bacteria do this a lot because it's simple, it's efficient, and creates a large number of organisms in a short amount of time. So the offspring and asexual reproduction are in most cases genetically identical meaning that they are an exact copy. So, you know, this is why medication works so well with bacteria because they're, they're not doing sexual reproduction. They're not combining different versions of chromosomes. So it's easy to attack them in the initial onslaught. Now, asexual reproduction, the reason that bacteria use this is it's simple, it's efficient, and it's an effective way for a single organism to produce a large number of organisms using mitosis. Again, making an exact copy. Now, prokaryotic cells are the ones that um, reproduce asexually. Remember, prokaryote means that they have no nucleus. Okay, They don't have a nucleus that needs to be broken down. They can just replicate the DNA, split the cytoplasm, and go into two identical cells. Now, there are, all, there are very few eukaryotic organisms that actually re reproduce asexually, but a type that we have are sponges. And sponges, they'll actually produce by a process called budding. And budding is a piece of them will begin to grow off, and eventually it will split off and form a brand new sponge. So again, this is another form of asexual reproduction. Again, very rare in eukaryotic cells. Sexual reproduction is more common in eukaryotic cells, and this is when the offspring are produced by the fusion of two sex cells. Now, those two sex cells are our sperm and an egg. And when those two come together, we get a normal full set of chromosome cells. So again, our sperm has 23 in our body. Our eggs have 23, which gives us a grand total of 46 chromosomes. Again, they fuse together in order to uh, grow an offspring. Now, the offspring produced are genetically different. So they inherit genetic information from mom, genetic information from dad, which makes them very unique, which is why we have so much diversity 
throughout our world. So most animals and plants, and even some single cell organisms, reproduce sexually. Now, organisms that reproduce uh, sexually do not produce clones. And what this means is that their offspring are genetically diverse. So when we say genetically diverse, their DNA is not exactly the same as their parents. It's a combination of the two. There's a combination. There's, there's ways that genes get altered. And this is why um, sexual reproduction is so successful. So again, it requires both the use of mitosis and meiosis in order, to, um, in order for the cell division to occur. So let's start with the simple process of the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is this period of time um, from the beginning of one cell division to the beginning of the next. So for example, mitosis is when our cells are split, okay? So the cell cycle goes through this process of growing, developing, replicating our DNA, um, preparing for cell division, and then splitting. And then our cells just keep going through this process over and over again to make more cells. So let's talk about what's actually occurring during the cell cycle. So first of all, this is where the cell will grow. It will get big enough, strong enough in order to split in a later time. Now the cell will also prepare for division. It'll increase its amount of cytoplasm. It'll replicate its organelles like the mitochondria and the endoplasmic reticulum and things along those lines. And it'll just have all the information it needs. It'll also replicate its DNA so that when it does split, we have two copies. And finally, what's going to happen is we're going to divide into two daughter cells. So if you look at this, this is the process of mitosis here. So the nucleus breaks down. We start to form chromosomes. Those chromosomes then migrate to either side. Or sorry, they line up in the middle first. Then they migrate to either side, so we split the amount of information. And eventually, they split off and form two new daughter cells. Again, daughter cells have identical number of chromosomes. So let's go through and talk about the four phases a little bit more closely. So the first one we have is the M phase. Now, the M phase, or M, stands for mitosis. This is the actual step-by-step -step process of when our cells are dividing into two identical cells. So this, this is the process of dividing the cell as well as cytokinesis, which is the splitting of the cytoplasm. After the cell is reproduced, it has to prepare for reproduction again. So it goes through what's known as the G1 phase. So the G1 phase is when the growth and development of the cell occurs. Growth in normal metabolic processes, just going through its normal daily progression. So after it goes to the G1, it gets to a point where it's big enough to start to replicate its DNA. So S phase stands for the synthesis of DNA or DNA replication. Again, remember, this is all occurring during process called interphase. So DNA replication occurs during the S phase when we are copying the number of chromosomes. Then we go into the G2 phase, again, growth and development and preparation for mitosis, intense growth, intense development in preparation for having enough material to split into two. So let's go through each one of these steps. Now, interphase is when G1, S, and G2 occur. So again, interphase is the longest phase of the cell cycle. It's the time in between uh, cell division. So this is obviously when it spends most of its time. So interphase is, again, broken down into those three steps, G1, growth and development, S, DNA replication, and G2, which is usually the shortest, and again, this is where the organelles, proteins are replicated, required for mitosis. Now, if we look here, notice how during um, interphase, we have a nucleus, our DNA is not condensed, it's just kind of going through its normal metabolic processes. So mitosis is when the cell actually divides. And it, there are four, five steps, depending on how you look at it, that occur during um, mitosis. So the first one is prophase. This is the first time we see our chromosomes visible inside of the cell. So once those chromosomes, they line up in the middle during a process called metaphase, as you can see right here. Okay, so that's metaphase. And then after they line up the middle, they begin to separate to either side called anaphase. Finally, they are separated. The nucleus begins to reform called telophase. Cytokinesis 
is when the cytoplasm splits. So in other words, we have enough material in both sides. So we're gonna go through each one of these steps of mitosis a little bit more in depth. So prophase is the first and longest phase of mitosis. And again, this is when 50 to 60% of total time is spent during the cell cycle. Now the key with prophase is that the chromosomes now become visible. So you see how it looks like little tiny worms on the inside of the nucleus. Those worms or those structures are our chromosomes. Again, they become condensed and they become visible. That's how you can identify prophase. Now what else happens is we have these structures called centrioles that are beginning to form. And centrioles are, are what aids in moving the chromosomes during this um, process. Again, they take their place in either side of the cell. And finally, our nucleus begins to dissolve. So in other words, we're dissolving this nucleus and the chromosomes are now getting ready to move and go to either side of the cell. The second phase, and I think this is the easiest one to identify, is metaphase. Now in metaphase, the chromosomes right there are lined up in the middle of the cell. So M for middle, M for metaphase. Again, this is the second phase of mitosis. So chromosomes are lined up in the center. Now you can see it here, center of the cell. Over here in the cartoon version, the center of the cell. So what happens is these structures called microtubules or spindle fibers are gonna come through and connect to either side of that chromosome. And what's gonna happen in the next step is they're gonna to begin to be like fishing rods and they're gonna reel them into the side that they need to go to. Anaphase, anaphase is our third phase, and in this sense, our chromosomes split into two chromatids. So the centromeres that join the sister chromatids begin to split, and what you'll notice here is our chromosomes are now being pulled to either side. Okay, they're getting pulled to either side. They're going this way and that way. They're getting pulled apart. So the chromatids separate. They become in, um, individual chromosin, chromosomes at this point. So chromatids get pulled apart and they get pulled to the pole of the spindle. So again, this ends when they stop moving. And once they start moving, we go into the next phase, which would be telophase. So I like to refer to telophase, telophase as our butt cheek phase. So what happens here is we get the pinching off of the two cellular membranes, as you can see right here. So this pinching off in animal cells is what's known as cleavage furrow. So a cleavage furrow is just simply this indentation that occurs on either side of the cell until eventually it'll pinch off and form two identical cells. We can see it right there as well. So chromosomes become loose, they begin to uncoil, and they begin to disperse back to where inside of their nucleus. So again, our nucleus is beginning to reform back around the chromosomes to hold it back in because remember these are eukaryotic cells those spindles break apart and our nucleus or nucleolus which is the tightly packed area on the inside begins to reappear now finally we have the process called cytokinesis now cytokinesis actually occurs during telophase and is different compared to plants and animals so in animals, the cell membrane will pinch off and we will get that cleavage furrow right here. You kind of see that occurring in that location until they pinch off and form two new daughter cells. Now in plant cells, it's a little bit different. So vesicles actually send material that will actually form the cell plate in the middle of the two new cells till eventually the new cell wall is formed and our two new cells will appear. So again, a little bit different in plant and animal cells. So again, mitosis, the splitting of the cell, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then we our two new cells go back into interphase that we have. So the other type of nuclear division we have is what's known as meiosis. Now meiosis is when we are producing our gametic cells or our sex cells inside of our body. So mitosis is a process of reduction division because we're cutting the number of chromosomes in half from 46 to 23. So our homologous chromosomes in a diploid cell are separated to form two sex cells. Okay, those two are our sperm in males 
forgot an R. Sperm in males and our egg in females. Again, both have 23 chromosomes in them. So again, this involves actually two distinct divisions, and we separate those with the Roman numeral. So we have meiosis one, and we have meiosis two. So again, these are what is done to get our chromosomes down to 23. Again, so we start with one diploid cell. We go through the first cell division in meiosis one to create two diploid cells. They are then split again without nuclear division to create our four haploid cells, meaning that they have half the number of chromosomes. So this is why two cell divisions is needed. So to kind of look at the process between them, they're kind of very similar. They both go through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, but there's, it's a little bit different, and we're going to kind of go through some of those differences. So a key term that you're going to need to know is what's known as homologous chromosomes. So this is when you have one from mom, one from dad. Well, I said that separately, but you get the idea. So those are our two pairs that you always get inside of your cell. And what we're going to do is if... Um, we're going to try to reduce that. Now, if a cell has both sets of chromosomes, referred to as diploid or 2N, if a gamete only has one set, we refer to it as haploid, which we were trying to get to in meiosis. So if we look through this, prior to meiosis 1, each chromosome is replicated. Okay? And what happens during this is the chromosomes will actually line up similar to mitosis, except instead of just one chromosome down the middle, we have what's known as a tetrad, or two chromosomes similar in shape that actually line up next to each other. Now, the reason that this is important is that this is where crossing over occurs. So crossing over is actually where the tetrad, or homologous chromosomes, exchange genetic information, pieces break off, and they are attached to the other end. Now, what this does is it creates genetic diversity. So the exchange of alleles between homologous chromosomes and we produce new combinations of alleles. So again, this is a very important step that creates genetic diversity in our cell. So that's meiosis one. Again, again, we have a tetrad or homologous chromosomes. Now, once we go to meiosis two, the cells from meiosis 1 are now entering. So here's cell 1 from meiosis 1. Here's cell 2. So again, they both go through these processes. Now, the cell does not undergo chromosome replication during meiosis 2 because we want to reduce the number of chromosomes in half. So anaphase 2, which would be right here, instead of our chromatids, or instead of the homologous pairs separating, it's our chromatids. So this is how we get half of the genetic information to both sides. So each resulting sex cell right here is, only has one copy of a gene. Therefore, we call it 1N or haploid in nature, half the number of chromosomes. So hopefully this video helps you out. It goes over both um, mitosis as well as meiosis. So again, my, mitosis, we're creating an exact copy. Meiosis, we're reducing the number of chromosomes in half to create our sex cells. Remember, we are making sperm and egg during meiosis. We're making gametes, which have 23 or half the chromosomes. Hopefully this helps you out, guys. This is, again, 